I decided to try out something I've never done before, woodworking intarsia. Intarsia is sort of a woodworking art form in which you cut apart various pieces of wood, different species, and put them all together to make one picture. So I'm no expert at doing intarsia since this was, well, my first one. <laughs> but I hope this video is enough to get you started and give you some of the basics of how it's done. And it's not that difficult, it's just, uh, it's kind of tedious and a little time consuming, but if you are patient with your scroll saw and take the cuts slowly, you should have pretty good results. Now if you want, there's lots of resources online that sell intarsia templates that you can use. Uh, you may want to do what I did is I just did a Google image search for coloring pages. You know, coloring book pages for children. Here's the original image I downloaded and I think you'd be able to use an image like this just as is. You'd probably want to make it bigger as I did on this. I enlarged it twice the size. I just traced it over all of this in Illustrator and used very fine lines. So I pulled out all of these different scrap woods that I have and it's really fun to see all of the different colors and the different types of grains that are available. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to map out on this little printout what types of wood I want to use in the various parts of the scarecrow. I'm going to start in the middle with his scarf and then just work my way out building up the pieces. For a scarf I'm going to use red wood and I want the gr grain going this way on this part of the tie and then on these two little parts here I think I'll make the grain going the other way. On all of these templates I am going to attach them to the wood using spray adhesive and spray this on the paper and then I usually let it sit for a minute or even a little bit longer and then it becomes more of like, like a post-it note so it's easy to peel off. All right, well, there is the uh, first of the necktie. So this is actually a lot of fun, just trying to figure out how to orient the grain. So for instance, I'm doing this part of his jacket, I guess it is right now, where it flares out. And so I'm going to use this part of this is uh, pecan wood. And right here where it all flares out, I think will be a nice spot for that. Well, here's where I am right now. I had some of the more of that beetle kill pine, which has some really interesting grain color. So they are going to be my patches on here. And I've got the grain going just different ways on that. This all came out pretty nice. I like the way it flows. My pieces aren't fitting together very well. Um, but I think once I sand over the edges it'll kind of look more deliberate <laughs> but I think it's coming along pretty well so far well here are all of the pieces cut and I've got them all laid out here I've been kind of trying to figure out what to do about his face so I just drilled a couple of holes about halfway through and then I've got these little uh, you know plugs that I can just set down in there and I think I'm going to do that for his eyes and I'll probably use a little bit of paint to make a black area. Now for his mouth and nose I just cut some really really thin pieces of wood and just kind of free handed them and I'm not sure if I'm happy with that yet or not. I am using a variety of sanders to round over all of the edges to all of the pieces. And I think that just helps to kind of conceal any places that don't fit together perfectly and kind of gives it a finished look. But I can tell you, it's a lot of sanding and it's not much fun. <laughs> What I'm doing now is just applying a light coat of glue to each of the pieces and just kind of sticking them together. I've put the template underneath a sheet of wax paper so that the glue won't stick to it. All right, well, there's my scarecrow all in one piece. Now what I need to do is trace an outline on this eight inch plywood. When I glue the back on over that hole there, I'll have a place to hang it on the wall. To clamp this down, 
I've got a bag that I filled with sand. And that's one of the best tips I've come across in a long time because all of the boards aren't exactly the same level, so this way it just pushes them all down. I tried cutting various shapes and sizes of wood to make his mouth and none of them really looked right. So in the end, I decided to paint in his mouth and his eyes and his eyebrows. Now, of course, if you're anti-paint, you'll probably want to figure out a different system. If you'd like to try to make your own scarecrow, check in the description box wherever you're viewing this video to download my pattern. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post a new woodworking video every Friday. And be sure and check out last week's video and a previous video from my other channel, Mirror Minutes. So yeah, I know, he's got six fingers on that hand. <laughs>